I always thought that sounded dirty, Kong. You know, I don't know why, but it's dirty. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. I'm joined today by Mike Ritland, and we are going to go over some new products he has in the canine sector. He dropped by to show us some things that he's been working on. And then I'm also going to walk through with Mike some of the stuff that I have for my dog personally, and he can kind of give me some recommendations of things he might add or subtract and things like that. So first off, if you're not familiar with who Mike Ritland is, if you want to take a second and kind of introduce yourself to those of sure. our audience that might not know. Sure. So uh, basically my, my background lies in naval special warfare. I spent a little over 12 years in the SEAL teams. Uh, as I transitioned out, I started my own canine company, uh, ended up with a contract on the West Coast. Uh, for the multi-purpose canine program and was out there as, as a trainer for a couple of years. Uh, once I came back, I started the Warrior Dog Foundation, which retires uh, former special operations dogs, police dogs, contract working dogs, and for the last uh, seven or eight years have been uh, maintaining the Warrior Dog Foundation's dogs and then also uh, from a Tricos International or business standpoint, you know, I offer police dogs, personal protection dogs, training consulting. I've written a couple of books. Um, and then we've started to come out with a few different products. Um, we also do an online training program with MikeRitland.com, just a monthly training lesson um, that, uh, that's also available, and, uh, and that's, that's pretty much the extent of it. It's a, a one-stop shop, if you will, um, in terms of importing dogs, breeding dogs, selling them, uh, training them, a uh, little bit of everything uh, in terms of the working dog world. Thanks, man. So what you have today are what, some leashes and sure, so, and things like that? Yeah, so you know, within the, not just the police dog or, or working dog realm, but, but even going to Petco or uh, you know, any, any purveyor of, of canine goods, if you will, uh, what I noticed is that they didn't have a product that, uh, that I really liked as it relates to uh, collars and leads or leashes. Uh, there was always several things about both of them that I didn't like. Um, I'll talk about the, the leash first. Um, you know, from my perspective, a leash is, is a multi-purpose item and as it relates to not just walking a dog, but, um, you know, in an emergency type situation of needing something that you can depend on. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, some, a car accident or a dog altercation or pick anything where you're walking your dog, you're out and about in a dog, a wild animal if you're, if you're hiking. There's a multitude of, of things that can arise where you need to have positive control of your dog with some a product that you can actually depend on in terms of tensile strength, durability. Uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, essentially uh, depend on on the dog's life with it, and, and uh, you know, with with them being who they are in our families, and and uh, you know how important they are to us. Uh, I wanted to make sure that every every element of of the lead uh, was was quality. So. Um, I, I love leather, uh, but what I don't like is, is the maintenance of it, uh, and also uh, in terms of durability, um, you know, over time it, it tends to wear out when you're using it in water, uh, out and about, you know, doing tracking or just hiking, or uh, you've got it in your car where it's hot and then it's out and whatever, and, and so uh, this material is, is a synthetic. It's called Brahma Web, which is similar to Biothane. Uh, it's just a little bit nicer, a little heavier duty. Um, and just has more of a, a, a little more realistic feel to it. Uh, it's incredibly strong. Um, you can leave it in the sun. You can submerge it in salt water for days. Uh, it doesn't rot. It doesn't warp. Uh, it doesn't fade. It's just a really, really durable, you know, heavy-duty product, which uh, which I like. Um, it can be wet, and it's not nearly as slippery as leather. If it gets, you know, the oil from a dog's fur or from your hands after you've been eating a cheeseburger or whatever, it's, it's not uh, greasy and slippery the way leather gets. Uh, it's just, again, it's just a real high quality product. Um, there's three kind of main points of performance in terms of, of what I incorporated into the leash uh, to make it something that I wanted. And again, this is both for, um, you know, the, the police dog community or working dog community, but also for, you know, civilians and that, um, you know, it's, it's something that, that has aspects to it that would, that would benefit them as well. The, uh, the clasp is a, is a Kong frog buckle, it's called. Uh, it's, you know, the tensile strength on it, uh, it's, it's used in, in harness and climbing equipment, so no dog is going gonna, is gonna to break this. What I like about it uh, is that it's very easy to open, uh, but it also is not going to open by accident. 
in that it has uh, you, you need you know two two points of contact to open it. So if it's just one, it's not you know if it brushes on something, it's not going to open uh, inadvertently. Um, for cold weather climates or if it's wet, you got gloves on. It's nighttime. It's very easy to just one hand without looking at it be able to open it. It also stays open. Um, and the way that it is uh, activated is you take the D-ring of, of any collar. You can use small D-ring from a regular collar or whatever and you just put it in there and it closes by itself. Um, one of the other things from a, an emergency standpoint or uh, if you're doing bite work with a dog or again it gets in a car accident or whatever, uh, there's some situation where you may need to uh, get the leash off of the dog while it's under tension. It, it still does that. So uh, it does connect, but you can pull on it and it still comes undone. So if the dog is, is pulling and you want to get him off, again, emergency, whatever, you can with one hand uh, let the dog go. And, and that is a huge benefit because uh, if it's something where you've got to get the dog off very quick and you're trying to grab the collar, you got gloves on, it's night, and you're sitting there with, with the typical clasp, mm -hmm. it's very hard to do, especially when a dog is straining. So Even a carabiner is like that, too. Absolutely. You know, so got tension under a D-ring on the carabiner. Yeah. So. Yep. So yeah, it, it's, that's a, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a nice, nice feature. Um, the, the design flaw or the problem with incorporating this into a leash is that there's not a swivel. Anybody that's walked a dog... Uh, or done any type of working work where they're tracking or doing agitation or whatever, where the dog's spinning or moving around, knows that if there's not a swivel, your leash does this and it starts to bind up on itself and becomes a mess and, and can get caught on stuff. Um, so this is a 3 16th stainless swivel. Um, same, same type of tensile strength uh, in terms of it's, it's not going to break. Very, very smooth and fluid. Um, the only downside that I see with it um, that just boils down to cost, frankly, is that it's a little heavy. Uh, so when it is on the dog's neck uh, or connected to a dog and you're walking, it, it creates a little bit of, of slack, which for some people uh, may irritate them. For me, it makes no difference. Um, you know, it's just it's something that's there that, that some people have noticed. Maybe it bothers you, maybe it doesn't. For me, from a utility standpoint, uh, it's necessary. You've got to have a good swivel, and, and the most common um, or, or weakest point in most leashes is that little brass button swivel. It can have a nice nice clasp, it can have really great material, a good handle on the end, but the weak, weak link in most of them is that, that little brass button swivel that's really cheesy and, and uh, only has a couple, couple hundred pounds of tensile strength. So we wanted something that, you know, again, if a dog, a 120 pound dog that's just banging at the end of a lead or, or whatever um, is not going to be able to break that and, and this uh, absolutely fixes that. Cool. The Last thing is, uh, is just incorporating this uh, Rope Keeper Black Diamond uh, lockable carabiner uh, and it's box stitched um, on here as well. And, and the biggest reason for this, a lot of people you know, don't, don't quite get why we put carabiners on the end, but again from an emergency standpoint, uh, if you've ever walked a dog uh, by yourself and a stray dog comes up, you get into a dog altercation, again car accidents, there's a multitude of, of instances where you may need to tie your dog off to something, uh, and this, this solves that. So you wrap it around whatever, clip it to itself, and now you've got your dog tied off to something. Uh, and again, you know, from having done it at night, tracking in the dark, uh, gloves on, et cetera, uh, that's why this rope keeper thing is here, so that if you just come down to the end, it's always in the same spot. It's not like a normal carabiner where it's flopping around and, and whatever. You can open it real quick. Just again, connect it to itself, and uh, you can wrap it around a car bumper, a railing, a tree, uh, whatever. These uh, do come in different lengths. This is a six foot, which is kind of the most standard length. Uh, you can get it at 10, 15, 30 if you want to do whatever, um, and it's customized uh, from, from where they're available. When you walk a dog, are, are you typically clipped into the dog, like that onto your belt? Um, not, I would say not typically. I usually am, am just holding it. Uh, sometimes, you know, you can create a handle if mm -hmm. you want, uh, again, with the carabiner, or you can just hold it by itself or, or hold it here. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that, that is also nice for the operator types, or again, even if you're just a civilian walking a dog, is that uh, if you need to be able to use both your hands, but also have uh, positive control on the dog, you can wrap it around yourself and now you have both your hands. Uh, generally, it's more applicable towards um, you know, operators that you know, they've got their dog on a leash and they want to have their, their primary out in front of them. But again, there's a, a number of times where I've been just walking a dog 
in a civilian capacity where having that as as, a, as an option is is handy so cool um, that's the the design behind the the lead um, the collar same exact uh, material uh, again it looks and feels like like a good high-end leather what I wanted to accomplish was to have um, have a collar that looked like a nice custom leather collar but was also adjustable which is very rare um, it's it actually it doesn't exist uh, which is why why we made it uh, I didn't want to have the the belt buckle look uh, with holes punched in it uh, like any other adjustable collar but the problem with having a completely custom collar in terms of of the um, uh, the length is that you know if you've got multiple dogs or you lose a dog um, so, you know, summer to winter, I keep my dogs a little leaner in the summer, a little heavier in the winter, depending on what we're doing. Uh, if I'm doing agitation work where I want I want the collar to be really snug so that the dog can't back out of it, I can tighten it up. Uh, and so with this, uh, it's got, you know, just a standard Cobra buckle, uh, super heavy duty, and I like the D-ring. It's real thick. It's easy to, to engage that, that frog clasp with. Um, again, the material is nice. It's got our, our logo and name, Trichos, on it uh, with the dog shield. It's got this really, really velvety smooth um, Velcro that, that you don't see very often. What um, is that, velvet? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, yeah, so the, uh, but the, you know, the gist of this is, is that it's, it's adjustable. Um, and so really all, all, you, all you do is adjust it. Um, it's got this breaker bar here, which, you know, it's not super hard to adjust, but it's hard enough to where it's not going to slide around. This, this breaker bar here is, is where the security exists. The, velvet, the, the velvety uh, <laughs> um, uh, Velcro is, is just to keep, you know, keep the slack you know, flush with, with the other thing, but, or with the, uh, the inside of the collar. Uh, this breaker bar, once it's bent over, is what locks it into place. And I, uh, as with everything, you know, we, we went through about four iterations of, of collars before I got it exactly how I wanted in terms of you know, thickness and, and operability. You just slide it like that um, and then move that, that keeper back up, snug it back up, and, and you're in business. So it'll fit between 16 and 21 inches, uh, which is you know, almost all dogs between about 35 and 100 pounds are going to fit into that, uh, into that length. But um, I've, I've used this combination to, uh, to tow a car just to make sure that, uh, that it would do it. And, uh, and there was no no problem snags points of performance with anything this like i said this breaker bar for those that may be worried about um, you know working dogs agitating dogs or, or pulling or they're pulling real hard that it that it will come undone it, it will not come undone this is a, one of the sturdiest mechanisms i've come across so um, again that's the gist of it it's uh, it looks nice feels nice it'll last you the entire lifetime of the dog uh, and it's adjustable. If you've got multiple dogs, you can use it on them. I uh, like that you're using a Cobra buckle, too. We use those yeah. in our bags, and what I like about them, just like you were saying with the Kong, is that, you know, if this is under load, you can still yeah. you can still release it, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. So yeah, if you ever had to get your dog out. Yeah, and, and to me, it's it's important that if, if you have to, you can, but it's not going to happen by accident, you know. So, because, you know, the, the reality is is that, you know, the the convenience of being able to do it fast and easy and whatever is, is something that, um, you know, a lot of people want, but you can't sacrifice, you know, an, a, a potential accident in, in the name of convenience. So um, that's, uh, again, these are the Tricos collar and leash combo. Um, you can buy them separate uh, or as a package. The, um, the gist of uh, where they're available is working dog dry goods. Um, and, and you just, if you, if you go on their website, it's, it's the Tricos collar and leash. So. Uh, you can also access that link from tricos.com and, and mikeritland.com also. But uh, those are those are our two two new products that are that are out and about now. Cool. So. Well, thanks for showing us those. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right, guys. So now what I wanted to do is just kind of look through what I have for my dog at home. This is kind of my ready to go grab dog harness that uh, that I use for my Doberman at home. So stitch on some nice ITS canine patches too. So my, I guess the premise of this for me is that I wanted something that enables my dog to carry some things that I would otherwise not have if you know, it wasn't ready to go. So I looked at this, I think I got this at REI, I think it's made by Mountain Smith or something, but it's just a harness system that's got you know, two pretty large pockets in the side. Um, and personally my requirements were 
that I wanted to carry, you know, the ability to carry food and water. Um, and I kind of do that through a couple of different things here. So I'll just kind of bust everything out here and walk through it. So I guess from one pocket to the other, what I wanted to do is carry water, and this was kind of the best thing that I kind of came up with for that because I eventually I would love to cut a little hole in the side of the, the bag and have this to just dump water into a bowl as needed sure. um, so I didn't have to pull the bladder out to access it. But I like the idea of the spigot thing to be able to you know, dump some water into a, you know, a water bowl, a collapsible water bowl, yeah. which I have. And then the other stuff in this pocket is j basically just, um, I guess, it teethers the line of trauma and medical. Um, the booboo kit is more, you know, obviously it's got stuff that can treat human stuff too, but the the premise was I at least wanted some Coban because that's something I've, I've attended a canine medical class before and they were big on Coban and um, I know hydrogen peroxide could be used to make induce vomiting if you had to in a dog. Um, and then the SWAT tourniquet was just the ability to have something that could wrap as a pressure dressing or a, sure. a tourniquet for a dog. And then our booboo kit plus just has a bunch of stuff that is obviously more for humans like medication and stuff, but there's a triangle bandage in there. There's, um, we've got a cold pack. I don't know how necessary a cold pack is in dogs, but we've got a, a quick clot four by four gauze and some other gauze and tape and things like that. So I know there's some crossover there of some things that could be used, but then I have a muzzle too. If I needed to mm -hmm. muzzle the dog, I could. Yeah. Um, then I've got a couple of chem lights if I needed them for marking. The, the harness itself actually has a little um, you know, flashing light if I needed to turn yeah. it on to be able to find my dog. And I just have a carabiner on here, but this is where I would clip the, the lead on to. Sure. And then I've got a Kong, and this is kind of a food water bowl combo thing that I can use yeah. bricks into two bowls. So I could keep food in here when I need to, and of course tennis bowl. Sure. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the gist of, of what I have. So. Sure. So the, you know the just kind of at, at first glance, a couple things um, mm -hmm. that I would I would add. Um, the the two main things are are from a, a trauma standpoint is there's a a, um, a compound or a spray called Vetricin um, mm -hmm. that's they they make it for dogs. It's it's the same exact thing for horses and and uh, cattle as well. But um, in terms of if if a dog gets any nasty lacerations or get something in its eye or whatever, you, it's safe enough to where you can flush it with air, okay. uh, flush it with that. But the, the, bi the biggest thing is if they get any bad bad cuts, they run into barbed wire or nasty thorn bushes or whatever, uh, that stuff is, is really worth its weight in gold in terms of disinfecting and, and flushing wounds out. Okay. Uh, I've, I've used it on myself with dog bites and, and uh, you know nasty cuts and, and it works really, really well. Uh, so a small bottle of that is what I would add. I would, I would probably still keep this for, for the vomiting inducing aspect. You know, could you could you slim it down weight wise and get like one of those little mm -hmm. epicac cups? You, you could. Yep. Um, you know, it's obviously personal preference. This is a little bit of a dual dual role, but I absolutely prefer the Veteracin uh, over really any. How does that compare to like a triple antibiotic or something, or so like a uh, um, macetration? In, in terms like of that? the disinfectant and antibiotic standpoint, it's it's similar. Um, but what it's what I like about it is it's dual purpose and that you can flush it because it's cool. it's the consistency yeah. of water. Okay. But not, you know, carbonated. So like you know, it comes in just a little normal spray bottle. So you can really get in there and, and spray it hard and flush cool. out everything in it and it disinfects really well. It's great stuff. I mean I use it a lot. There's a small ten milliliter syringe in here for yeah, um, that type of application too, yeah. just to flush wounds and stuff like yeah. that. So and the thing that irrigation. That, uh, yeah. I mean, I uh, you know, call me uh, you know, caveman like or old fashioned. The, the, a spray bottle, you can get quite quite a lot of. No, I like that idea. Out, out of force yeah. of that, so I, I use that as kind of a dual a dual role. Like I said, to, to really yeah. flush it out. It kind of hurts, but it'll open it up and, and get everything out. Yeah, great idea. Um, the the water thing, I think, is good. I would agree, and that uh, if, you know, having a hole with a spigot so you can just you know fill a bowl up and whatever. They also make these little, um, you know, they're small water bowls that have a, a flap that opens up that you can just, you know, it's kind of a dual water thing uh, and bowl at the same time, but it's 16 ounces, 20 okay. ounces, you know, so if you're going on a long day or whatever, this would, would be a better option and, and I would stick with that. But yeah, just for ease of, if it's on the dog's back, you know, to just be able to open it up and 
fill the bowl up and give it to them, I mm -hmm. think, is, is a really good idea. The only th other thing I would add in terms of from a medical standpoint uh, would be one of those small aluminum SAM splints. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, in case the dog has any, you know, because there's four legs and if they have any type of carpus or wrist or, or injury, you know, to be able to um, either, either um, you know, splint that, that injured joint or if it's a pad, to be able to tuck it, uh, wrap it, and, and, and then wrap this around it to keep, mm -hmm. keep their foot off the ground. You know, if they rip a pad or, you know, rip one of their nails out or, or something, a severe foot injury where you don't want them walking on it, uh, that SAM splint, the rigidity of it is really good for keeping it up as opposed to just trying to wrap it. And then also if it's a, a joint, you know, what you'll usually find dogs tweak is, is that carpus, that mm -hmm. wrist joint. Um, and so to be able to, you know, to, to splint that and, and wrap it is a, is a good, good thing to have because that's something that would be common, yeah. um, you know, in that type of environment. But, What's uh, your thought on, like, dog booties having... I think they're great. starting out wearing those if you're yeah, I mean, hiking or something with the dog or... To me, it's, you know, we use them um, if it's really, really hot. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's really, really cold, uh, or if it's god awful terrain, like a search and rescue rubble pile type stuff where there's glass and hazardous material and things yeah. like that. If it's just normal hiking and stuff and the temperatures are, you know, within what I would consider a moderate range, you know, it's not that you can't use them. I mean, it's, it's, it's protection. The one thing to keep in mind, though, is, you know, it, most dogs, it does take a little bit of them getting used to it. And it can also just like, you know, if you walked around barefoot your whole life and then threw shoes on, like it yeah. can create problems yeah. too. Uh, hot spots and, and blisters and, and, or, you know, not, not blisters the way we get them, but, but raw spots and, and can, can cause chafing and friction and stuff. So I typically only use them, you know, again, if it's super, super cold or if it's really, really hot. And by hot, it's if the ground is hot. If it's just hot, they're, uh, those are gonna make them hotter, you know, yeah. because they, they, sure. do, they do perspirate out of their, out of their paws. So if it's, you know, I, it's kind of one of those things where I think sometimes people want to use them because they're cool or they're like, well, yeah, <laughs> why not? There are times where, where you wouldn't want to use them, and, and those would be good examples of that. But cool. But I do think it, it, would, it would be a good idea to have them. They don't take up much space. Uh, they're not heavy uh, in case, you know, again, the dog runs into something, um, you know, or you, you encounter something where, yeah. you know, you weren't expecting it and, and whatever. Cool. Um, in terms of the, the other stuff, Kong's great. You know, whatever toy they want, uh, you may throw some sort of treat, uh, mm -hmm. just a small thing of treats to, if you do run into something where uh, where you need, and this is more from a training aspect, but but from where you need to get the dog's attention or keep him focused on you and, and maybe his ball drive isn't high enough and you want to use it to, to get him out of something or you know pay attention to you instead of something else, yep. or just to have. Uh, it's never a bad thing to have you know a handful of some sort of really enticing treat. I think uh, you told me about those greeny pill pockets years, yeah. years ago, and I've been yeah. using those yeah. for a long time. Yeah, they work uh, work really, Dog really good. Dog loves those um, things. <laughs> and the only thing, you know, from a from tennis balls, I, I like the chuck it, the blue and orange rubber mm -hmm. chuck it balls. Last longer. They last longer, and these um, the the glue on on these uh, seams, if a dog chews on them long enough, can mess with their teeth a little bit. Okay. Um, and then the other thing too is debris sticks to these sand and dirt mm -hmm. and so if, if the dog's sitting there chewing on it can wear their teeth down over time too so i i usually uh, exclusively use those those chuck it balls or something cool. like it i mean orby makes a nice ball there's a lot of rubber balls that are the same size that i would i would probably use instead of that but um but yeah everything, everything else looks good i you know that's in terms of just a basic kit those couple of things medically is what i would add and then um um, you know, the, the, again, the booties are good to have, not necessarily to wear, but uh, but if you need them, and then swap uh, swap the ball out. But uh, yeah, everything else, I think it, it's a good good starter pack, and uh, there's nothing nothing really uh, else that I w would. What are your thoughts on dogs carrying weight, like a harness system like that? I think it's fine. The one thing to keep in mind, and, and one just one thing that I'm thinking of it off the top of my head is I, I don't know if you have Benadryl in here or not. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, yeah, as, as long as it's got in there, it's always good to have on. But um, in terms of carrying weight, uh, I think it's fine. The one thing, the, the two notes of caution would be if the dog is, you know, under 18 months or two, even two years, I would be cautious about how much weight you're putting on or, or putting much at all. Um, Just because they're still in development. Yeah, phase. you know, and putting, putting weight on their hips while they're walking mm -hmm. extended distances. Can you get away with it? Probably. Um, you know, would I rather err on the side of caution? I, I would. Yeah, um, good point. And the other thing, too, is realize that 10 pounds isn't a lot of weight, but when it's 
a quarter of your body weight. It, it is a lot of weight, <laughs> yeah. you know. So it's it's easy to be like, well, I'll throw this in there and I'll throw that in there. You know, you, you don't want to have, you know, if it's a 50 pound dog and and, it, and his pack weighs 12 or 15 pounds, like that's, you yeah. know, that's a significant amount of weight, you know. So uh, just keep that in mind and also realize that just like with us, you know, um, even though we walk completely different, you know, that, that amount of weight, if, if we're distributing it properly, is not that big of a deal, but on a dog, they don't get that, you know, mm -hmm. and so typically, you know, these are, are on, you know, the middle of their back, you know, pushing not down. Not on their hips like it right. should be on a you know, human, so, yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of like putting it on a horse, uh, which it's an animal not de not designed to be, yeah. you know, weight bearing in that spot. So, uh, again, I'm not saying don't do it. It's, it's fine as long as you're not, you know, putting 20 pounds of gear on a 40 pound dog and, and whatever. But uh, cool. yeah, everything else looks real good. Good deal. Thanks, man. You bet. Appreciate it. You bet. Hey guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. As always, use the pound tag Gear Tasting in any social media network and we will get your answers to your questions right here on the show. Almost screwed that up. <laughs> and if you like what we're doing, please consider joining our crew leader membership, link below, as well as checking out our store, which is also linked below. Thanks for watching.